Good to have you here, those of you that are here online and in person. We know the weather was a little sketchy this morning for some people and others. They just go, yeah, this is normal Utah weather. But good to have you here. And we're grateful that uh, Michael was willing to step in at the last minute to save us because nobody wanted to hear me speak again. That's really what it came down to. So we're, without further ado, I'm not even going to introduce his topic because I think he needs to do the whole thing. So first thing I do, how many of you can pronounce his last name? No, you can't. His wife goes, yeah, I got it. Okay, here, wait, wait, wait. Microphone on this because this is always fun. Chris, Leah. Good. Okay. Close. Oh, oh close. Okay. Gerhardt's got it over here. Yeah. Prismola. Close. Oh, close <laughs> again. It just, well, I, I, the, the thing is that neither of you are wrong. <laughs> the, the Polish pronunciation, there's hopefully no Poles in here. <laughs> uh, the P R Z is a whoosh. So it's Shpawa. So when Americans or when Polish people come over here, I've seen a few that have actually tried to stick to that pronunciation, but most of them, they just mix something up. So it's Prisbyla, Prisbala, Prisbyla, Prisbyla. It's just... How do you pronounce it? Yeah. Um, good day. It's all yours, Michael. Prisbyla. Prisbyla. Okay, well, let me... Uh, Start by telling you a little bit about myself. Did, did you bring the Kleenexes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a sad. sad I was thinking I just start pulling the paper towels out. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Anyway, um, I, I'm I'm a lot older than anyone here. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you'd be surprised. I'm going to turn seventy-eight in about two or three. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's that's maybe young. you'll understand a little bit of what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to tell a few stories from my youth. And uh, I grew up in a time so much more innocent than what we have today. Uh, I don't know how I would raise kids. If I could raise my kids in a time a lot more innocent than we have today. I mean, if, I don't know how you can be driving along in a car listening to the radio and have a commercial on ED <laughs> and have your 12 year old or 8 year old kid ask, what are they talking about? And, you know, and, and worse on, on, on television. So, I, I, you know, there was a time when I was about eight years old, seven, eight years old. Uh, I came from a family of uh, seven kids, uh, six boys and one girl, one tomboy. Yeah. And uh, so, and, and she was way younger than me. I was the second oldest. My I had a little brother who was a year and three months older than me. And then we, I was a second oldest than one a year or three weeks younger than me. And um, then I don't know why, but my dad took a break for a couple months. <laughs> and so there was a little bit longer between the fourth boy. And so we were kind of three older boys. Anyway, the three older boys weren't talking. And you know, mostly back in those days, you know, for a dime, you could go on a Tuesday afternoon and see a, a movie, you, and even a double feature sometimes. And you'd buy this, one of them, you'd buy the thing at school. It was like 10 tickets to use over the summer. And it was a dollar. So you could buy 10 cents, you could go to see a cowboy movie. But well, most of them were cowboy movies. Every now and then, they threw in a, a romantic, you know, some sort of question. No, thing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a great disappointment. But we were talking about one of those movies and whether or not they actually kissed in the movies. And, and 
you know, back in those days, you know, those black and whites uh, coming out of the 30s and 40s, uh, you know, the rule was, I think they finally let the man sit. You, you never slept in the same bed. And they were in separate beds. And the, the male actor, he could sit on the female bed, but he had to have one foot on the ground at all times. Anyway, we're, we're asked, you could come up with this great question. Do they actually kiss? I mean, do their lips actually come together? And we discussed it, and of course we decided that no. I mean, let's face it, they're just actors play acting. They weren't married, so it was probably just trick photography. <laughs> trick photography. And, and so that gives you an idea of my uh, maturity and uh, uh, and how uh, I think I'm pretty mature a lot to talk about. Yeah, yeah, innocent, innocent, innocent. innocent. But my youth was, and, and, uh, and the beauty of it. And I will admit, I was uh, quite innocent for my age. But I lived in a time when that was when you could. A child could grow up innocent. And uh, anyway, uh, about the time I was 16 years old, uh, one other thing, I had a very strong dad. Uh, he was a genius, no doubt about it. I went to Berkeley, became a chemical engineer, got into the war, and the naval went to Annapolis, I got a degree in electrical engineering in Annapolis, uh, and uh, he, he was, by all definitions, a uh, super genius. And he, he grew up dirt poor. He wanted his kids to have an education, and uh, that was really pounded into us. And uh, Anyway, he, he raised, his father was an alcoholic and did not get a manual on how to raise kids for it. And so he uh, used negative reinforcement. So he was only telling me, my dear idiot, to encourage me to stay for it. And uh, my idiot left her home, did it, but, uh, And uh, so I, I did not have a, a, a strong, great self-esteem. I, I, you know, many times I felt so low I could go up to the curb and do chin-ups. But uh, anyway, uh, so the low self-esteem, I, I didn't understand girls. To this day, I don't understand. <laughs> no, I had. And, and I was afraid to talk to him. So very low self-esteem, and I was afraid of girls and never talked to them. And oh, they had one other minor problem. I grew up, I was a runt. So I um, started school when I was four. It's the way it worked out. And so I was the youngest kid in the class. And, you know, like the second or third grade, they wanted to keep me back a grade. Not because of my stupidity, which was there, but because they felt that I was the smallest kid in the class. And my dad went down to the school and, and they said, Well, he's, uh, you know, he's just a small kid in the class. They said, We'd like to keep him back in grade. And he was about to let him do it until he asked, Well, if we keep him back in grade, would he still be the smallest kid in the class? They said, Oh, yeah. So that was the point. So, anyway, that's what it is. So, uh, I get to be about 16 years old. Uh, don't talk to girls. Probably hadn't said anything to girls in 16 years. I not see the point. Uh, <laughs> it's not like someone's going to be interested in me. And uh, But by the time I was 16, I started to grow. And in fact, I, like my junior year, I grew from 5'2 to 5'8 in like six months. I grew like an inch a month. And uh, anyway, uh, well, my younger brother, Paul, very popular with girls. Uh, and 
in those days, we, we didn't have a mall. Like we had one of the first malls in the U.S., Stanford Mall. Uh, but um, that's not where the kids hung out. They hung out at the library. And the only way I could get out of the house at night was to tell my dad I to go to the library. So you grew up in the Bay Area? Palo Alto, California. Yes. Halfway between San Francisco and San Jose. Yeah. And home to Stanford University. Our high school was right across the street from Stanford University. Uh, great school. I thought I was going to college there. Uh, but in the end, I just got into it. I just bring it with him. And I just, you know, I decided I was going to be I didn't like the way they looked down on the 2.0 average. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and, and I'm just I'm exaggerating. I got 2.0. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm 16 years old, um, and I got a good friend in the ward that lives right around the corner from me, Stuart Van Wagner. He's got two older sisters. This guy is educated. He knows about girls. <laughs> and he says to me one day, wouldn't you, uh, don't you think Janet Rathall is the most beautiful girl in the world? Uh, well, you know, I didn't want to say no because I, I think we're other girl better one, it seems to me. But, you know, he's pretty excited about this. I want to get into an argument. So, oh, I, oh yeah. And uh, anyway, the next thing I knew, the two of us were in love with Janet Rathall. <laughs> and what were we going to do to kiss her? You know, uh, no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting rushed into this thing. Anyway, the two of us, you know, we know that that first kiss, we know what, you know, you know I mean, not, you know, nowadays. I mean, I don't even know how you practice for your first kiss nowadays. People kiss and kind of maybe get a large mouth, large mouth mace and jars, stick your tongue in a tongue or something. <laughs> Practice. I don't know. It's just crazy today. Anyway, we needed to practice this. And it, it, back in those days, it, especially in black and white films, there was one great, uh, it's, it's in his name, Valentine, or Rudolph Valentine. He was the most suave kid up in there. And he knew how to kiss girls. I don't know if he's any girl old enough to see his movies there. You know, I heard she just watched all that one because she missed this. <laughs> it, it's just amazing. I mean, he was a professional dancer, so he, he had the smoothness and the moves. And uh, I saw a couple of his movies that were. And in my mind, I took copious notes on uh, how this is to be done. And so, you know, Stuart and I, we're, we're, we're discussing at the minor, you know, points of uh, kissing a girl. And uh, we're no uh, country bunkers, you know. We uh, have pillows to practice on. And, and, and so, you know, you can, you want to, and, and we're, you know, it's not like you're going to grab it by the ears and, you know, you know, we, we were at this, you know, and that can happen in the first case, you know, you just get so excited, you know, it's like, <laughs> but, but we wanted it, you know, we wanted this kiss to be the most beautiful kiss in the world. I mean, it may not be the first kiss for the girls, but the girls uh, and it's a funny thing about girls. They, I don't know if you've noticed this, but girls don't like kissing. They only allow boys to kiss them. You know, it, because, you know, it, back in my days, you know, the boy always asked the girl out. The boy always kissed the girl. And the girl, she just kind of either rejected you or allowed you to do it. I mean, that's. And I never got to be allowed part, but that's what I've heard. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so 
But we are practicing it, you know, you just not gonna you know, grab her. It's it's gonna be smooth. So you walk up to your pillow and you slide your arm around. It's hardly gonna notice this. And then so you're right about there. And then your other arm slides around and you want to kind of like a, like you're holding a baby you know because you're gonna, as you know just kiss a girl any way decent you bend her over <laughs> and you have, that's why you have to have the head the head go oh! you know because then you're really trying to get over there to that head and, and a lot of things people are wrong and so we we i practice this you know so Anyway, uh, I can't remember what happened to Janet. I think it was just kind of uh, lost. We never said anything to her. She never said anything to us. So, and, but it was a great romance moment. <laughs> that was one of my that was one of my first great romances. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so what, what we would do at night to get out of the house was go to the library. Now for me, this was a wonderful experience because I like to read, I'm not very talkative, I'm very shy. Now my brother is younger than me, year, year younger. He's popular and doesn't like to study. I don't like to study. Well, I like to study just not what they were teaching in school. I mean, you know, they had class on same gray cowboy books, you know, I was right there, or on fishing. You know, I read every book in the library on fishing. So I just loved the library because I could read any subject you want. So I didn't just go in the library and just, just immerse in all the books. Paul would stay outside and socialize with all his friends. One day, I minded my own business. A girl comes up behind me. Puts her hands over my eyes and says, Guess who? <laughs> you know, I've never said hi to a girl. This is this is pretty embarrassing. And, and, and I, I didn't know what to say. I, you know, I'm thinking. But she finally just says, it's me, Sandy, you know, and oh, nice. And she says, I was talking to your brother about you. And, and uh, you know, so uh, I, she says, come on, come on outside and talk, you know, and so we can talk. And went outside and, and, you know, it was about time for the library to close and, and we were kind of panicking. And when she's telling me about school and stuff and, I'm just, uh, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> and uh, then it was, oh, oh it's, oh, it's, it's almost, we, we need to get, it's almost nine o'clock. We gotta, we gotta go. And, and, and she says, okay, will you, you'll meet me after school tomorrow? And I'm like, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah but, oh, it's time to go. And, and we, and I got out of there. Now, I did have a motorcycle. The love of my life because, uh, you know, because I could go from the Santa Cruz Mountains, I could drive like crazy. I was addicted to adrenaline and I could drive like really crazy. And, uh, and I was alone and just go off on trails and I stop and watch the hummingbirds, uh, butterflies, and I talk to God, and uh, God, we had a kind of great conversation with God. <laughs> he doesn't say much, but he's a great listener. And, and um, anyway, how we do? Okay. My wife worked in. So anyway, we're, uh, we're uh, you know we got this thing all down. It, unfortunately, with with Janet, uh, it turned out that she 
decided she liked me. And uh, it's probably sad for her. Anyway, now I'm with Sandy. That's how you grab Okay, I'm with Sandy. So she, she suggested or hinted that I'd be walking her home from school. This is big news for me because I always wanted to do that. I used to sit in the trees. There was a, there was a elementary school and then the junior high school next to each other. There was this trees I climbed up in the trees and you'd see these junior high school kids walking home carrying the girls books <laughs> and I thought oh, 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 oh. <laughs> when I get to be in junior high school I'm going to carry girls books and now I'm in high school and I'm going to carry girls books and now I've got the opportunity and I got up she went to the junior high school I was in high school so went over to the junior high school she's in like ninth grade so you know, I walked her home from school and, and we talk. We talk about everything. We talk about what she did in school today, what this friend did, and, and uh, how she's got homework to do. And, and uh, oh, I, I, that was hard to believe that I could be so loquacious with girls. You know, just talked and talked and talked. And I, we, and so I became quite good at talking. And, and so she tells me she's having this party and, uh, you know, wants me to come to it. And, you know, I, no. and the girl plays right according to the books. You really don't tell the boy anything. What you do is you tell your girlfriend, you know, do you think, you know, do you think Mike's ever going to kiss me? The girlfriend says, well, I'll ask. And she doesn't ask you, but her girlfriend then asks a friend of yours and says, you know, is Mike ever going to kiss Sandy? And then your friend comes to you and said, uh, Sandy wants you to kiss her. <laughs> and, uh, this came as a shock to me because, you know, our relationship was going really good. Uh, she would tell me about her friends and I would listen. And, and so, anyway, I go, okay, yeah. So Paul's telling me, you know, Sandy wants you to kiss her. This is a real branch into the, our relationship. So, anyway, so I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kiss her at the party. And so we get to the party, you know, we dance the jitterbug and uh, other things like that. And uh, I'm watching her. And finally, we take a break and we go sit on the table in her backyard. And so we're sitting on the table with our feet on the, you know, the bench we're sitting on, listening to her watching her, but I've got to do this, I've got to do this. And uh, so I'm sitting there, but I'm watching her lips, you know, watching this. I'm ready to focus on her. 62. I have the tiger. I have the tiger on On and I can't say whether she stopped talking or just slowed down enough to, to inhale. <laughs> but and on, and I'm not going to tell you that but one thing about me was to kind of save my self esteem was I wrestled because I had you know, older brothers. And uh, I had my older brother for some reason was supposed to pick on me. So I wrestled with him there. My, and it turns out in wrestling, I was a natural wrestler. I was a natural wrestler. Anyway, the, the one thing that made me great, I, I, I was a uh, was I got lightning fast reflexes. Lightning fast. Uh, 
to this day, you know, I'll be in the shower and the soap will slip out of me. And, and <laughs> honestly, nine times out of ten, I can still grab that soap in the air. And that cracks. No, you don't. Okay, you won't believe that. Okay, here's. I'm sitting next to her. Her lips are moving, and I'm, I'm, you know, crouched like a tiger. <laughs> and, and, and I'm, I'm ready to go. And, and like I said, I don't know if she actually stopped talking or just wanted to take a breath. But I was in and out <laughs> so fast. I'm not sure she even knew what happened. Now she didn't say. You know, what was that? <laughs> and, and it's like a gunfighter, you know? So you want to see the battle? You throw out on the west? You want to see it again? <laughs> well, that's how fast it was. You know, so I'm thinking, oh, my duty, my sexual obligations are all first time. <laughs> you know, I've done it. The woman's got to be satisfied. With that. <laughs> and so uh, she may have mentioned to my brother Paul at the dance that uh, I don't know, that didn't count or what or asked him, when's he going to kiss me? I mean, he may have even just got over it. Yeah. So. Uh, so a lot of pressure on me. Anyway, the dance is, is over, you know, we get out, figure, okay, this is it. You know, I'm on the front porch. Kids are all in my dad's station wagon with their noses pressed against the window. You know, and I'm up there on the front porch. There's this light right there. This is not very romantic. It's kind of blinding. But there's a big, huge tree in the middle of the yard. So I'm going to take her over there and we're in the shadow of the tree. But this is perfect. You know, beautiful lawn had been cleaned up. And I'm sure they did the lawn work that day before the party. And so at the base of the tree, there's this big round area, black, glistening, beautiful soil, glistening because of the moisture, little pansies, you know, planted down there. All bright little colors there with the dark black background. It's just so oh, shade there. This, oh, this is a kiss. This girl will remember the rest of her life. <laughs> I'm ready for my book. This girl, like ever the subject is kissing brought up, she's going to go on a town meeting. 1963. It'll be telling this to our grandkids. I don't even know what happened to this day, but I'm going to tell you. Anyway, this is the type of kids I'm going to give her. So I get her over there. I move up to her. You know, the girls are you know, very stealthy. She probably didn't see me coming. Slip one hand. Waist, waist, yeah. <laughs> and then the other hand. I'm going to tell you something. Now, she's been in the movie a thousand times. I've seen Rudolph Valentino do it. I know how to do it. I've practiced with a pillow. <laughs> One of the problems that you have, hello, as nice as they are, I don't want to offend any girls. That's as much as a sack of cement. And I mean, you, you laugh, but you you bend over with this, you know, sack of cement. You know, when, when they when they film the thing and, and they're going in for that close up, I'm sure the director's like, oh, we want to get, you know, really get the, you know, you know, yeah, that's fine. You know, yeah, you know, we all get excited. It's really going to touch. You know, we get excited. But what about kids or in the audience taking notes? Yeah. 
<laughs> Don't you think it would be important to get a little foot shot there to show that you got to stick a foot out <laughs> to, to, to support that kind of way? <laughs> really? You need that kind of information. But no, you're sitting there like this, and all of a sudden, it's like, this, 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 this girl, you know, and, and there's that one point where you can go too far, and, you, and, and I'm, I'm approaching that point. We're losing altitude fast, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, well, there's only two possibilities here. So it's not that difficult, you know, you flip a coin if you want to, but one, yeah. you can just let her go. <laughs> you can just, is it still working? Yeah. Let's see if I can get it in the back. You know, you can just let her go. Or, you can continue to hold on to her and go down into the lab with her. <laughs> I'm thinking, because I got a fast brain, I'm, I'm processing this thing, and, and but you know, you, it's like two options, and you know, and you're trying to look for something else, you know, but that's it, and and you know, you don't have a lot of time to think. But as I'm standing there, I'm looking down at her in the mud. <laughs> beautiful. Pastel pink party dress <laughs> with that black mud glistening in black town. You know? you know, now again, I got two possibilities. I can get down on my knees, say the word, you know, but maybe long nights of practice. I might be able to get this down, you know, with your help. Or you just kind of walk off. <laughs> so I casually walk towards the car, mention over my shoulder, well, that's a kiss she'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's where the cleanest is coming in. That's on a Saturday night. I, of course, don't see where anything's wrong with our relationship has changed. Not <laughs> <laughs> how our relationship has changed, but you, and you won't believe this. And I went to pick her up Monday after school in the morning. She broke up. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> I've played in mud all my life. I never broke up with a girl. So I don't understand. But fortunately, fortunately, and I've written a book on my memoirs. Pretty much each chapter ends with, and I swore off girls for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, this, and this time, since I dropped her in my deficit, I swore off girls. And this time, I really did. And so, but I am not an expert in this. So there's no reason why I can't share my knowledge and my expertise with young men who need someone, a mentor to look up to. That's the type of guy I am. <laughs> I was willing to help others achieve my success with women. <laughs> but anyway, Glenn Hill, a good friend of mine, he came seeking my advice. I mean, word gets <laughs> out and stuff that I friends that I kissed a girl, but I may have mistakenly <laughs> dropped it in a conversation <laughs> here or there. But just anyway, not, not that I would ever like, brag about my exploits with girls. <laughs> anyway, so uh, 
go in detail. I explain who I'm the artist. You know, like, okay, one big thing is where are you going to be? Confined spaces like the back seat of a car. It's not as easy as you think. I've got to tell you from experience that uh, if she doesn't want to get kissed and you're in a confined space like that, you can get kicked really hard. So you've got to be careful you know, when you're picking your spot. So again, if you're like at her front door, you know, you've got the one the light shining. Yeah, I just I would normally recommend a tree in the front yard or something, but uh, they just have bad feelings about that. So, and then if you're at the front door, you know that door can open any second with the father being there. So that's not good. But I finally decided that we narrowed it down and we went with the back seat of the car. So we're going to the Golden Green Ball. Or he was at the end of the Golden Green Ball in the church to dance and so on. He's like, Mike, you gotta be there with me. I said, nah, ooh, 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 ooh. I'm a teacher. I don't do, you know, I, I just <laughs> intellectual. But he kept like, bugging me and bugging me, and finally I called him you know, I called every girl in the ward. For some reason I wasn't that popular. And they all it would be you know it'd be nice if a girl would just say no, but to laugh at you and uh, <laughs> anyway, the girls can be very hard. But I went through every girl in the report. Finally, uh, I got one girl uh, who said yes. But you know, the minute you hang up on that first girl, you know what you know what she's going to do, don't you? She's going to call everyone else in the ward and get mad. It's like. Guess who called me? <laughs> you won't believe what you know. <laughs> so anyway, I did finally get a girl to go out with me. And probably because she hadn't gone out with anyone else. That's her father had pretty much said no. And so this time, rather than asking in advance, she just kind of told her dad, hey, by the way. Mike Frisbee when the ward asked me out, so um, we're going out on Saturday night. And uh, I don't think he took it well, but when I showed up there, you know, as you know, if you're from dated in that era, you, do, you are not ready when the boy arrives. I don't care if you've been there all day long, you are not ready. You are giving your damn time to sit down with that young man. And explain to him what happens if anything happens to his daughter. So I sat there and he went into great detail on how my kneecaps would look and other parts of my body would be twisted if anything happened to his daughter or if she came back one second past midnight. Uh, the dance doesn't end until and he jumped up out of his chair and said did you hear me I said one second after midnight she's not inside this house oh, oh yes uh, we'll probably have to leave a little early then and uh, so anyway we go to the dance and you know, about 11 30, I was like, We gotta go. And Dave's like, <laughs> uh, And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think this girl cared that much about my weekends. <laughs> she wasn't showing any real concern. Glenn State, they were getting along great. And so we gotta take her home. Now, I didn't say this about Glen State, but she, we live in Palo Alto, which is a nice area, but she lived in Los Altos Hills, <laughs> not just Los Altos, the hills. And it, it's not like she had a, a swimming pool, you know, 
she had a lake. And so Glenn, we're taking Glenn, I'm taking Glenn home. She lives on the Alpine Loop. So you go up towards the Santa Cruz foothills, and there's a loop that goes around. This goes up in the hills and it's you know very scenic drive. And it comes back where you start. Well, she, she, on that loop, she lives over here. So I can either go like this or I can go like this. Well, I know Glenn is not making any fast moves back there. So I'm thinking I'll just take this long way. And it's about five minutes to midnight. <clears throat> the short way is 15 minutes. So we're not making it there back or 12. And the long way is about 45 minutes. But we're going, and I'm watching in my rear view mirror. You know, my date is next to me, and I'm looking, look, and I'm slowing, you know, I'm thinking, just wait. You know, we're going to be there any minute. And I'm slowing down, I'm slowing down. I'm slowing down so much, I'm just looking in the rear view mirror. I can care less about, you know, I can see something gravelly passing underneath the car. That's what we're going around for. And I'm watching Glenn. And you know, I'm in was, I mean, was slowing down. There was a guy jogging. He passed us up. <laughs> you know, and I'm slowing down. And I'm saying, come in, come in. No, come on. We, we discussed it. You get to the door, and your chances are shot. And, you know, and she lives way up in the hills, you know. You know, she, it, this is not, you know, uh, all my efforts. And finally, he reaches over, puts his lips on hers. Oh, thank goodness. And she pushes him off and yells, Stop, you've gone too far. <laughs> oh, his first kiss. And the poor guy, the girl finds religion. That'll help. Right then and there, it's like, Oh, poor little. You know, it'll be a monk. And then she says, you passed my house. It's back. <laughs> now, i got to tell you something. That if it was the other way around, and it was the guy's house, and he was just about, and the girl was just about to kiss him, I can guarantee you there's not a man in the world who had not driven around that loop four or five more times. The girls... So the poor thing, uh, anyway, uh, Glenn uh, got his first kiss. And the problem is now, we got to take the girls home. And, uh, you know, I'm a gentleman. So as we passed my date's house, I did slow down to about three miles an hour as I flung the door open. Which girl? And so I'm not talking to her dad. And uh, I was out of there. <laughs> yeah, I got 15 minutes to stick with I got next year. <laughs> no, uh, to be honest with you. I I really didn't take much. Uh, hey, you got to twelve thirty deep. I I really didn't take much uh, after that. Uh, I actually uh, my family. Let's see, that was is sixteen. So I graduated at seventeen. Didn't take at all of my senior year in high school. Went to graduation. Got bored after about 15 minutes and went home. Uh, I just was afraid to talk to girls. Things just didn't go well until and I got to uh, family moved to Europe. I was there over the summer. And I did manage to kiss a girl over there. And then I got, okay, okay that story that all ended up with Marty. <laughs> we're, we're in Finland. Or we're in we're in, in in Sweden. My brother's on a mission in Finland, so we're going to go to Finland. We take this ferry, 
across and uh, it leaves at night and arrives there in the morning. And you put your car on it, you know, you know. So my dad, you know, we could get on there and and, and the Swedes had invented this new thing. It's called a sport report. And so one of the things on this Swedish ship is my dad paid for us to eat at a sporting board all you could eat. This was like the first time you'd ever even heard of some place you could go to and eat all you could eat. So dad was pretty insistent, you know, be here, be back here at eight o'clock or whatever. I paid a fortune for this, you better be. Yeah, they had just go check the girls out. Oh, by the way, my dad's opinion of me is that I don't bake. I don't know how he's got that. But he once offered me, uh, he came around to me and says, Mike, you know, you've got to chip off the old block. And I go, he said, well, when I was your age, I used to take girls all the time. And I go, oh, yeah. Not so I'll tell you what, I'll give you 20 bucks if you take out this girl in the board. Uh, today, that's what, 200 bucks, maybe more. I said, no, nah. well, I'll pay for the date and I'll give you 20 bucks besides. You can take her anywhere you want, go up to San Francisco, take her to the finest restaurants, you know, whatever you want to do. And I give you 20 bucks besides. Nah. So he was a little worried about me. And uh, he was always worried about me uh, for everything. I was always trying to have a good time. I was just, anyway, he, so we're, anyway, so yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just going to check out the ship and check out these girls. So we find these girls, and then it's like, it's time to go eat. So I had to, you know, they didn't oh, we speak any English. It just came as a shock to us. So there it goes. I start with, you know, Pablo Espanol. It's uh, probably too far to say, well, you know, throw all these things that they're not going to go. It turned out they're Finnish. They, they spoke a little German. They had my brother. He took German in high school, two years. Got half spoke to all both years. And it's like, well, Paul, they speak your language, you know, by that old they are. And he came back and says, uh, you're over 10 years old. That's what they, they said, they're over 10 years old. Is that what they said? I said, no, but I can count to 10. And what they told me was not one of the years I know. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we're got nothing to talk about, you know. So, we get some deck chairs and we're just kind of like kissing. A couple hours later, <laughs> someone's walking down the you know, hall. Oh, doesn't look like that. What? And then Paul jumps up, goes hand check, and jumps up in the air. Of course, my dad sees him standing there going like this. And my dad looks at us, turns around and walks with me. And I thought, Paul, we need to get going. Paul, no, I'm not going anywhere. Do you realize how much trouble we're in? Yeah. That's why I'm getting my money. So we just made out the rest of the night. And then in the morning, as you're waiting to, to bring the cars off, the, uh, we ended up standing there and about a meter at the table there uh, was the girls' family. So we got to be polite or crying out loud. You know, it's like, hi, you know. So we walked over there and, and gave the girls another good night, good, goodbye kiss. We got our car and we got in. Paul and I, as a station wagon, we are in the back of that station wagon with our heads back against the window. 
because we're no only want to be anywhere close to where my dad can reach back and hit you and and he's gonna throw something. We need a little bit of time to respond and, and you know, maybe it'll go out the back through the back window. But anyway, we're my dad says to my mom, you know, you won't believe what I saw last night. And I'm just shaking. And Paul, who's always been crazier than me, says, oh, yeah, man, what did you see? And he's like, well, I saw these two young Americans. Probably the only time they're going to be in Europe. And they were up way into the morning. Who knows how late they stayed up. But you would think that they would have come to bed at a decent hour so they don't sleep as we drive through Finland and miss out seeing Finland. And my brother said, I don't know about those two guys, but I got to see more Finland last night than I ever dreamed possible. <laughs> and I, which I was, oh, see. So anyway, I think my dad was relieved that I actually did like girls. And uh, anyway, so that's that story. But uh, in the final, we'll end up with Martin. <laughs> yeah, it's a good story. It's a long story. Because uh, you, you're probably wondering, what is she seeing in me? I allow that. We <coughs> was going to BYU, and I uh, made up my mind that I'm going to study. I'm really going to study. I'm not good at studying. I don't sit still very long. I pretty much made it through college without ever taking any notes, mostly without going to class. And uh, without reading many books, <laughs> and it was very it was very disturbing to a lot of people, including teachers. <laughs> and, uh, one, I, one time, I just showed up in the final, and uh, I got the highest grade in the class. <laughs> and this just happened a lot. Then they'd have to call me in on the lunch, after lunch in class, and all this stuff. Keep me on track. Where am I at? Oh, Marty. So, you know, keep me on track. So, I'm at BYU. The, the, the two guys come in, friends of mine, say, hey, let's, let's go watch TV. It was Deseret Towers. They had a cafeteria and a television room. And the big show then, you might remember, The Fugitive. And that was the big thing, Thursday night. So, it's like, come on, my fugitive's on, let's go. And I go, man. I know I'm the biggest goof off you've ever met in your life, but I have made up my mind that tonight I am going to study. There's nothing you can do, there's nothing you can say. It's going to change my mind. I, once I make up my mind, that's it. And put so much pressure on me. He said, Oh, come on. I don't want to. So, Got up and went down to the TV room. I led the way, opened up the door. Like, this is the room. TV's over there. The rooms are going like this. And right here in the row, right by the door, there's like three empty seats, and then there's Martin. So I just walk in, sit down next to her. So that's. Still checking So like you're sitting there and you know, put your hands on your knees and kind of check out the place. <laughs> you know, she doesn't know what's going on, you know, and then the old, uh, <laughs> you know, women just are oblivious to, and I, I'm just so good at this. <laughs> In fact, you won't believe this, but you know, we walk down the streets, I'm good looking girls coming the other way. I'm checking her out. Marty doesn't even know what's You know, so anyway, 
<laughs> she thinks I just was by the trip. Anyway, so I'm checking her out and the commercial comes on. And I don't know what to say to the girl, but so I kind of plan this out. So I just kind of like uh, said, fine. Which she then said, fine. <laughs> that was pretty much it for me. You know, unless she starts talking, I, you know, I've used everything I've got here. <laughs> so she doesn't seem to speak the same. I don't know, it just popped into my mind. I just said, well, I hope you noticed I was a gentleman. I waited until a commercial before I tried to pick you up. <laughs> and she said, I noticed, and I'm very impressed. And that is the moment I fell in love with Marty. <laughs> because I've been saying things like that to girls, and they always go, <laughs> this is the first girl that ever responded with humor. This is no for me. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, okay, two minutes. The first kiss with Martin. We're on the first date with her, and we're and we're in the guy's car and. He is purposely going to run out of gas because he wants to. See, he just bought this Volkswagen Rabbit or Volkswagen Beetle. And he wants to see how far it can go on a gallon of gas. So how would you do it? You would fill the tank up, drive, keep track of the miles, fill it up again. So now you know how much gas you use by filling it up again, and you know how many miles you've driven. Now he's got a better idea. He runs out of gas. He puts in one gallon of gas and see how far he can drive before he runs out of gas. And so he tells me on this day, we're going to run out of gas, but I've got another one in the trunk. So, but you know, let's let the girls just think we ran out of gas. They go, yeah, that works for me. So we run out of gas and he's like, oh, we got to go get gas. Come on, Mike, let's go. And I go, no. I think I'll just stay here and keep the girls warm. In fact, if your girlfriend would like to come in the back seat here, I could uh, keep her warm for you too. And she's like, oh yeah, I'll be right back there. <laughs> and uh, he's like, what, what, wait a minute, Mike, you gotta be coming with me. And I'm like, oh, you know. And so <laughs> I mentioned, uh, so I brought up the subject of kissing. And Marty said to me, I don't like kissing boys. But, uh, well, that's it for her because, uh, you know, standards. I mean, it's like the first girl I've actually got on a formal date with since the last fiasco. <laughs> and it's so been years. I thought, okay, fine. This girl's not for me. And so I just said, uh, well, my motto is if she doesn't kiss on the first date, it's her last date. And Mike Marty said, well, I don't like kissing boys, but I, didn't, I wouldn't like kissing you. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. <laughs> I'm not going to question it. I don't know how to get it deeply involved. And so I kissed her. And uh, so she did kiss on the first date and she got the second date. <laughs> uh, fortunately. Anyway, that's <laughs> I watch shows two minutes, so I want a uh, the oh, rest of the pretty. story over here. Uh, well, he, he got a lot better uh, at his. <laughs> 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 a lot more suave. 
<laughs> so you like that, dude. Uh, That's yeah. all I can say. Well, I've talked about that a lot. It's kind of the conclusion that, uh, well, I got a picture of me when I was young and I always thought I was ugly. But looking at the picture, it wasn't bad looking. <laughs> Did you show up my glasses? <laughs> <laughs> so I just, it was, uh, but you had very low self esteem. And so it was very nice to meet one of them, someone to talk to. Thank you. Appreciate it, Michael. Hope you had enjoyed today. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great time. Take care of yourselves.